Hey everyone! We're just waiting for Marco. I want to welcome everyone to Re Behind the Scenes. And uh, today our guest is going to be Marco Gianvito. And he's going to be sharing his experience with us about his very first burr. And in case you guys don't know what a burr is, that means buy, renovate, uh, rent, refinance, repeat. So let me just see if Marco's on right now. Um, let me get him on. Oh, just waiting for him. He should be coming on up, coming on in a minute. Okay, just waiting for Marco. He's going to be talking about his very first burr. Um, and again, I'll just repeat in case you don't know what a burr is. That's buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat. Okay, here is, here is Marco. So let me... Uh, Hey, Diana. Hey, Marco. Mm -hmm. How are you? Great. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You can hear okay. me too? Yes. So okay. does Instagram work um, on a horizontal plane or just vertical? Only one way. Yeah. Only vertical. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so how have you been? Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. I was looking forward to this. It's fun. Yeah, this will be a lot of fun. We'll get to see your project, see how, how it goes, and learn about all your learning experiences. So it'll be exciting mm -hmm. for everyone, too. Yeah, so well, I'll try to make a short thing. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. We have time. We have an hour. Uh, so if you want to start with the viewers, just telling them a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm a real estate investor. Um, this is a, a new a new start in my life. I was uh, a corporate banker for 25 years, and uh, that came to an end last year. And um, so, uh, exactly one year ago, uh, I was uh, I was kind of take I was I was kind of forced to take a, a training seminar. It was a three day weekend seminar, and I went kicking and screaming. Um, with the intention that I would leave after the first day and get my money back. But I stayed all three days. And then fast forward a year later, I, we have this, uh, this burr, uh, duplex conversion, and uh, we just, just rented it out, both the upper and the uh, lower, for uh, December 1st and December 15th. So we're really excited about this, and... Um, it's been a long journey, and uh, it's just been a lot of training, mentors, coaching, uh, just that, and then a lot of networking as well. So, but uh, that, that's basically in a nutshell, yeah, where I come from. Awesome. And so, do you want to give the viewers a little bit of background on what, let's say, renovation experience you have? <laughs> Zero. <Is that> <laughs> Zero. Okay. <laughs> no renovation experience whatsoever. <laughs> so I kind of rely heavily on uh, my network for guidance when if I came across any issues. And a lot of it was just kind of learning on the go as well. But definitely uh, having a coach is what kind of pushed me through it uh, and got me to the where I am today is, is just having someone that made me accountable and it took it took quite a uh, a lot of offers before before actually landing on this one. I, I think this was the seventh offer. Some some was some were lost uh, because we didn't bid high enough, and others we walked away from after we did our due diligence. So uh, it was great learning, and uh, and then this also was a great learning because every time every time you renovate, what I'm learning is that 
you got to expect the unexpected. And, and that's probably lesson number one is like, just be prepared. Just don't, don't get down. It's going to happen. It's just part of the, part of the game. That's awesome. So then you would say that this is, so you were basically starting from a blank place and then a year ago is when you started your whole learning experience and this burr is everything was new for you. Actually, actually. Yes. Awesome. Yes. And, and this is, and this is also new, this Instagram live and social media is also new for me. So, so thanks. <laughs> so thanks for, you're me. another, so, so you make me accountable. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Yes. So do you want to take us through uh, what you did in your property? Uh, yeah. So um, did you want me to also kind of walk through it or just talk about it? Uh, let's do a walkthrough. Okay, so um, just so I'm right now I'm standing in the living room, uh, the upstairs, and um, really upstairs was we didn't do very much. It was mostly cosmetic. Uh, here, new baseboards, new flooring. I actually attempted the flooring. I won't. I won't say anything more about that. Um, but I also did all the painting. I I had help. There, I had a couple of friends coming out as well that came to help. I would try to call it a painting party, but you know, <laughs> so they, it was nice. You know, I had some uh, great friends that came to help, and um, and so really, it's just all painting, uh, pretty much up here. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just take you just quickly. I won't go through the bedrooms. It's just so you know, this is a two bedroom plus a den. I because I don't think the den it's it's got a walk out to the deck. And we didn't think it was like really a bedroom, so we kind of promoted it as a two bedroom plus den. So okay. uh, what we did do up here, though, that was, um, I guess, considered, uh, you know, a convenience. It was like extra work. Was maybe you could see over here is I put this ensuite laundry. Can you see that? Yep, yeah, we can see it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we we closed uh, that would that would have been the side entrance that uh, went downstairs and upstairs so that got closed off and we put this uh laundry it was it's a it's a full um full size full size laundry facilities and up here uh we also put a new we also got a new fridge up here as well and again just a little bit of painting and and cut uh, and cosmetics um some lighting changes things like that we kind of we wanted to uh, get rid of all the halogen lighting in here and we put leds okay so what nice. i do is then I'm going to walk over to the uh, the basement, okay? So do you have to, so so now you, uh, the two units are completely separate then now? Yes, they are. Although my basement here is, um, it's about 95% done. So I, okay. I've got my tenant coming in on the Tuesday, December 1st. So there's a few things I still need to finish. So you can, you'll have a look down here. Do you want to flip your camera? My yeah, I will. I will. There. Perfect. Okay. So that was where we just came in from. Okay. So you could see, you could see the hallway. Uh, you got the kitchen. I'll, I'll walk through, but you see the kitchen over here to the left. This this is our great room, and there's gonna a little space for a dining area over here, but also it's a it's a good sized front room that um, makes things convenient. You could see all the pot lights that we put in, and a really and a full size kitchen with all the full size appliances. Wow, and, yeah, uh, a big kitchen. Yeah, so we we decided to go uh, with um, upgraded cabinets and a two tone and a white. Uh, countertop it's quartz and uh, and then we thought you know what subway tiles they're cheap but they look good so we did that as well and uh and you could see it's uh it's a really uh it's a it's it's a really good fridge as well and um yeah so that's that and then so up here in the ceilings um what you can't see is that We've we've uh, soundproofed it with resilient channel, and um, also rock sol insulation, so to minimize the sound transfer. 
another thing that we had to do is I had to put extra heat runs in here because it wasn't it wasn't set up. We were missing heat, heat runs, so we did that as well. Um, and then uh, we got new windows. And this is, for me, one of the best rooms is the washroom because I don't know if you could see that, but it's a uh, it's a double vanity. Mm -hmm. And we think we thought it's our opinion that um, to make this a little bit of a premium kind of uh, premium type basement, so that because not not everybody likes living in a basement, but it doesn't give you the feel of a basement. So mm -hmm. it's much more attractive to people, especially, you know, being brand new and it's a double sink. So it's a good size washroom. I'll just walk in. And, and you could see that. Was the washroom already existing? Uh, there was a washroom. This, this was a whole teardown. It was oh, a complete gut job. Com yeah, everything oh, so got torn out. The walls and everything are all everything. new? Yes, oh, everything okay. brand new. Yeah, it went down to just bare wall. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So a lot of work went in, which is kind of why it was a bit a bit on the expensive side. But we also did a lot of extra stuff here that I could t I could talk to a little bit. Um, but I'll just show you that here's here's our laundry facility. And so again, it's a full size full size laundry facilities here. So it's just accessible through the washroom with this uh, an accordion door to just kind of hide it up hide it. So one of the expenses that we had here was, uh, so this, I don't know if you could see this, that's the water meter right there. Can okay. you see that right behind yeah. this? Yeah. This water meter was where the kitchen was. Oh. That's where it used to be when we first bought this. It was, it was located over there. So we had to move this water meter here. So that caused extra expense. Then why we also had... Pardon? What, why did you need to move it? Just because it was in the way for the kitchen? Yes, it was in the way of the design. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. Exactly. So, <clears throat> so we did that. And uh, one of the things that we did also is, uh, it, was, it was actually mandatory, but again, it increased our costs, is uh, we, from the curb stop outside, the curb stop would be where the uh, city's uh, water main is. So from there, and this is a, a big lot, by the way. It's we, I think it's like 60 by 120. And um, so we had a 30-foot 30 30 foot run. It was a 7-foot trench from the front all the way down into this part of the home, right? Just that ran right into here. It was a 1-inch copper pipe that we had to bring in. And they made us do that because it would facilitate good water pressure for having a legal duplex. Yeah. Ah, okay. So that was again a very expensive proposition, but again, it was necessary, right? So uh, we believe that this is all adding value to our property, and you know, I'm just preparing also for the uh, refinancing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare a uh, um, a sheet, a spec sheet for all the uh, upgrades and pictures and everything for the appraiser, so that they know exactly. Yeah. So. You know, if we're gonna, if we want to get what we expect, then we're gonna have to uh, back up all our points. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so I'm gonna turn around. So this is the master bedroom here. It's a pretty good sized bedroom. Um, yeah. And what I could. I think this is legally, I could call this a walk-in closet. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that big, but I'm just saying, but you can literally walk in, so that's good. Um, <laughs> there's the backyard. <laughs> okay. Um, the other thing, of course, everything that, um, what we had to do here is we had to uh, make sure we uh, followed all fire code, and that includes um, having interconnected uh, three three-way uh, fire alarms, and those that's interconnected with uh, also upstairs, and it's all hardwired. Yeah, that's the code now. That's the code. Yeah, and we another big expense here was uh, separating the the meters. So what we did is we split the uh, hydro meters and we increased it to a two hundred amp service. So. We have one of these boxes here upstairs as well. 
Okay. Just right above us, was, right over here. And that was by choice, right? You just wanted to split up the meters to make it easier for like no tenant fighting and things like that, right? Absolutely. That was absolutely by choice. We didn't have to do that, but it was one of, one of the benefits of having a network of um, a lot of the real estate investor peers is that we, we were able to talk to quite a few of them to get opinions on whether it would be worth the extra expense. And we think the uh, resounding um, feedback was that it's worth it. So you put the money in, but you get it, you, you'll get it back out at the end. But also you'll, you'll get it back out at the, finance, the refinance as well. So this, yeah. I still need to finish painting, but this is a steel door. It was very expensive because it had to be custom, custom made because of the size here. Because of this bulkhead, it couldn't be a standard door. It's very expensive. It has also this louver, which is a very expensive louver. It shuts down if there's a fire or, and when there's not, it just lets air into the mechanical room. So in this mechanical room also has, um, so it's also got a fire alarm like everything else. It's also got induct, induct fire alarm. Uh, so what this does is it, uh, it shuts, it'll actually shut down the furnace if, it dete if there's any smoke in the uh, ducting system. Oh, so that's what, the, the, yeah. So that was another pretty big expense. Um, the furnace that was here was breaking down. We put a brand new high efficiency furnace. 95% uh, high efficiency, and uh, and then we got a 50-gallon water tank. Here's a 40-gallon before. So uh -huh. those are some of the additional expenses um, that uh, cost us uh, pretty significantly. The other thing that is worth noting is that um, you see that blue pipe over there? Yeah. So what, what that is, that's PEX. That's three-quarter inch PEX. Um, it was... One of the problems that we were faced with here is that um, the original plumber on this job, which was the responsibility of the GDC, um, put half-inch pecs. So remember, we, we brought one-inch pipe, copper pipe, into the, uh, into the basement. Mm -hmm. And the reason was for water pressure. We yeah. didn't realize until after the fact, until after it was all, the basement was all painted and everything, we realized, uh oh, the guy that did the job actually only put half inch instead of three quarter inch. So we had to retrofit after all the painting. We had to retrofit um, three quarter inch pe uh, pecs. So um, we were lucky enough that we were able to do that. But you know, it could have been more cata more catastrophic. But we were kind of fortunate with that. That's good. So so that's the great. mechanical room. And the key thing with these things is that. They have to, you see, it's all, I don't know if you could see, but like it's all sealed in here all the way to the top. And uh, same thing on that side as well. It's all sealed. And that's just uh, a fire barrier that is uh, by code that we have to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also the inspector, the inspector came two or three times. So she, the last time um, she was like saying, you know, you have to make sure that this door locks on its own. So, so I had to also get like special hinges to make sure that this door would lock on its own. Uh, what else? So I guess, I guess that's the majority. And then of course, uh, one, one of the other things that we had to, uh, that we did is we uh, also did all the uh, sealing of the, uh, all, air, all the air sealing in between the joists for the whole perimeter of the house. So that's another thing that we did. And one of the reasons is that uh, we, applied for a um we applied for an energy audit with enbridge for an energy rebate so that and one of the pros is that we were expecting to get two thousand dollars back from um enbridge for the uh for the energy audit process and that was also a little bit that was an interesting little process that uh, i learned a couple of little lessons from but but well worth it in the end <laughs> Good and a good learning experience. So, uh, yeah. so, so I think that's the other. Oh, the other thing I think is important to uh, maybe let you know, and this is one of the surprises that we came up with that came to us. We didn't expect this from the beginning. So this part in the mess, but this is the, the main stack right here. This is the main mm -hmm. stack. So this used to be cast iron, all the way up to upstairs, down, 
underground all the way to the all the way down to through the wall down underground so when we discovered that it was we had an option do we keep it do we get rid of it it's going to cost us more money in the long run it was well worth it, i think the expense so that whole thing they had to break ground and change everything to current plumbing standards okay yeah that's probably so, a good idea especially like you said you're planning to keep this property can't hear you. oh you can't hear me do you, can other people hear me i don't know can you hear me now a little bit maybe i'll just hold. is this better or maybe are you covering the the mic or the the speakers can you hear can people hear me <laughs> uh i don't know are you able to hear me marco now i can i can hear you but uh i don't hear you on my speaker for some reason i hear you through the phone so i'm not sure why that's okay uh, i can hear you i think someone was it maybe cuz someone was calling you cuz i know that happens to me that it yes somebody was calling me yeah i think it, yeah i don't know how you can switch it back cuz i've had those problems before it's like once it calls it goes to uh it gets off the speaker okay yeah but we'll work with it <laughs> we'll work i can still hear you but i have to listen carefully okay do you want to uh reverse the mic back on you cuz i think now we're ready. we've seen everything now we can um now we can talk about your learning back to where it was. Okay. Oh wow. I can't hear any a word. Oh no. I can't hear a word. Um let's see. Should There must be a way we could uh Do you want to get, get off the mic back in action? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. I I have it as loud as I can. And then come back on again? You want me to come back on again? Yeah, maybe get off the live and come back in again. Maybe that'll okay. help. Okay. Okay. Do I need to get an invite from you? Uh or you can request it either way. Once you come back just like get off Instagram, go back in again and then okay. uh like get on to the live and then I'll add you back in again. Okay. Sorry guys, some technical difficulties, but hope you guys are enjoying Marco's uh burr. so far and um let me just check where he's at okay i think he is still on yeah okay let's see hey hey is that better no oh, way better okay there way you go <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've had it happen to me before also yeah Okay so now we got to see your place so it looks like your place is so it was a single family home and then yes. you guys turned it into a legal duplex and both units are two bedrooms one bathroom right yes except that we, there's also a den upstairs oh with a and den so it's two bedroom right. downstairs yeah that's right mm -hmm. yeah uh so would you like to run us through the numbers of how this project went for you sure um So let's Just start with the first. Correct me if I if I'm wrong on anything, okay? So, no uh this this home was purchased uh, at 432,000. Yep. Um then we um it cost so we had closing costs of $7,000 which included title insurance, land transfer, tax and legal costs. Yep. Uh then we um our our rental expense ran at $120,000. Mm -hmm. and um and and now we just like i said we're um i just signed leases a couple days ago so we're we're getting $3500 so 1700 downstairs and 1800 upstairs which is really good mm -hmm. income for a uh, duplex and this is in Bra brandford right brandford yeah it's about 20 20 minutes outside west of uh hamilton for those mm -hmm. who don't know yeah yeah And then your holding costs? 
Uh, so holding copper over the five five month period was uh, was basically nine hundred dollars a month, so forty five hundred. Yep, forty five hundred. Yeah. Yeah. And then so um, and then so I don't think you've gone through the refi process yet, right? But, Not yet. I'm just getting ready. Expect, so what are you expecting the refinance to come to? I am expecting it at at. I'm hoping to hit six hundred, if not maybe a bit more. So six hundred thousand. Okay. Nice. So all, and then, sorry, go on. Yep. Yeah, so so basically, um, it costs uh, five fifty to get to where we are today, and well, that's and then plus uh, the carrying cost. But if we hit the six hundred, and then we refinance with us at the six hundred, we're looking at a mortgage of four eighty, and at today's rates. 480 uh, was like 2000 and change to was it 2065 I think it is so um, and then some of the other costs uh, that we're allocating uh, here are um, again so I'll explain this but there's property management 5% we're assessing the property you know what we want to do is we want to be conservative here so even though I'm the property manager and I will continue to be the property manager I still allocate for that expense and it's going to sit in a reserve fund. So if there's any, any thing that happens, you know, there's going to be some money in that account to take care of any unexpected uh, surprises. So, so that's $175 a month for, for that. That's, and, and we're using 5% as, as our um, estimate on that. People use different numbers. I've heard five, eight, 10. So we're using five again, it's not a, it's not a, it's, it is a cost. It's a true cost, but I'm going to be doing the work. So, so there's that. And then there's, uh, I think we did, uh, a, a, I'm assessing a hundred dollars for maintenance a month, but again, because it's brand, everything is brand new, all new electrical, all new plumbing. I'm not really expecting a lot of, uh, surprise expenses. So again, that's just going to be sitting in a reserve fund. And um, and then what else? What am I missing on that? Property taxes. Property taxes, two hundred seventy-five dollars a month for property mm -hmm. taxes, and, and then uh, vacancy. And vacancy, yeah. Again, vacancy. Um, I don't anticipate it, but we always want to be prepared for that. So that's another hundred. Again, we use five percent, one hundred seventy-five dollars. So so four hundred fifty dollars a month. That we're claiming as as an expense is is gonna is actually money gonna that's gonna be sitting in the in the account. So it's not it's not gonna be. What's that? And something I feel like there's as always to note is that I mean you technically are the, are the property manager, so you should be paying yourself one. And also in the future, when you have many many properties, it'll be good because you already have your slush fund. So if you do pass it off to a property manager, it's already been put into the budget which become which is very important right because I feel like when it's already in the budget it's easier to allocate to a property manager where it's you know if you decide afterwards and then you don't really have the money for it it just makes it harder to even pass it off because you think like oh I never even budgeted for it I don't have the money right? yeah and um and the, I think the beauty of it is also the fact that it's it just makes the numbers more realistic when you're if you're going to be promoting it to um, another investor, for example. So okay. it just makes it more realistic. And uh, that's the reason we did that. So after subtracting all those costs, and even though that $500 is sitting in an account, the positive cash flow on this property is $700 a month, which is like nowadays is like hard to come by. From, yeah, yeah. My understanding, yeah. yeah on, a duplex, on a duplex, that is, okay? Yeah. On a duplex, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, that's an awesome deal that you guys were able to find that. Find, and, and it shows that if you wait and run your numbers, do your analysis and wait for that good property to come, it will come. It just may take a little bit of time, but it will come. And, and then you get like that. So now you guys will be cash flowing 700 a month, which is amazing. It's a good amount of money to have. Yeah, definitely. Very happy about this, this whole bit. And, um, and all, yeah, the, and the rental process was was went quite smooth as well, and did learn a few things 
about that and, and how to screen and did a lot of... So the one thing that got me, I think, to where I am today is um, is having a support network. And and I think it's one of my one of my tips. It's one of my learning experiences. It's like you can put it in any category you want. Is having a network. So that includes paid coaches, unpaid mentors, or paid mentors, whatever you you know. Um, having access to a peer network, being members of uh, multiple real estate investment clubs. So there's constantly resources on speed dial. I have like hundreds of contacts. When I have a question, I can, it's like, oh, this is a Diana question, let me call Diana. Or, you know, this is a Tom question, let me call Tom. What, you know, it's like, that's what it is. So it's so important to have that because when you do when you do face those problems, it's always good to have somebody you can talk to. So 100%. that gets you over it, right? Yeah, especially when it's your first and even or just anything new, right? Because even as renovate as um, real estate goes on in time, strategies change, you know, depending on how the laws are in the country, you may have to adjust depending on what changes they make. So it's always good to have that network because if you miss it, someone else will definitely catch it, right? So your network is definitely so important. And having that relationship is also very important because like that, we all try to keep each other on track on what's going on and get everyone's opinion. So definitely all these things that you said are so important. Yeah. And Diana, so then, you, you also know that um, it, when, once you're in the, um, in the space of networking with other real estate investors, there's, there's webinar now with COVID. Before it used to be all in person, right? We were, up until COVID, we were, we were driving to uh, Oshawa or driving to Oakville or to Burlington or to Cambridge to go into these in-person meetings and me and then networking and making contacts and you know all that kind of stuff so now it's like webinars i think i think i want a webinar three or four times a week i think there's always something going on and and all of it is valuable and all you need is one or two nuggets each time and it's like it, and it's it's worth you know it's like kind of like gold right and just kind of it all adds up Hundred percent, yeah. So, would you like to now go through um, what are some of the problems that you faced and how you solved them? Yeah. So, uh, I, I covered one or two already. Like, so the I'd say the biggest problem was the the plumber problem. So, um, I, one of my tips is make sure you have a good team, a good power team. Uh, make sure you have people to lean on in that power team that will take your call and give you some advice or refer you to people that, that they know that have experience. So rather than you know going on Kijiji and looking for somebody that can do a particular thing, go through your network, lean on these people and get referrals. And then, and then you do your due diligence on those people. You still do your due diligence, but at least they came from somebody who you trust so that always that helps, right? So, so I would say the first thing is the fact that um, it's a big lesson learned is that my GC used a plumber that I don't think was qualified as a plumber, and he was the very first the first plumber that we had because we had two here, and um, and it caused us we started discovering because the second plumber came and we the reason we discovered these problems was not because the GC caught it, which he should have, but it was the second plumber who was here who came to do the finishing plumbing, and he starts looking around, he starts realizing, hey, this isn't, this isn't done properly. This isn't done. So he must have spotted like five different things that weren't done properly. The worst was the fact that there was half inch pecs instead of three quarters inch. So we had to cut all the drywall from the meter all the way up that wall through the ceiling across to the bedroom and then a trench and then we had to fish 
all the way through down to the mechanical room to get three-quarter inch there. Thank God we were able to do that. And then I had the uh, the new plumber. He had, he has one of those microscopic cameras. So I had him I had him fish behind all the walls wherever he could where it made, made sense to make sure that he was happy with what was there. So that was the main thing. And um, so me at first <laughs> at first you kind of you, you, you know it's you, you're upset, right? I mean, let's face it. I was I was upset, right? So but. You know, in hindsight, it was like, oh, we were able to resolve it. And, and that's the important thing. So I, what I did is I made my GC accountable for that. So he was really, you know, he may, he may have missed a couple of things, but he was at least very accountable. He didn't disappear on me. He was here when I needed him. So that was a positive thing. So that was, I think, the biggest problem that we overcame. Another one, I don't know if you can see back here, was... Um, the design, the way this, the way the measurements worked out here in the kitchen, there was this, um, the design, there's a joist running right down here. So the way, so we couldn't, so we couldn't put this chimney all the way up because of the joist. And you couldn't run, so, so I had to have somebody build a little box for just to hide the top portion and put the chimney underneath that. You see, you see the box here? Yeah. 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 So, you know, I didn't know how to, it took, it took me a little bit of time to figure that out, but, you know, and then I, I talked to, uh, I talked to uh, my, the guy that was doing my finish, some of the finishing work. So, uh, like, uh, he did the flooring. I was originally planning on doing all the flooring down here, and I was planning on doing all the, uh, all the uh, baseboards uh, and, and, and the doors. So, um I'm probably the only Italian guy that, that that really can't probably do all that stuff really well. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I found somebody who I really liked. He's amazing. And I knew he was amazing because when I got him to come here to quote me on my flooring and on the trim, this guy went down on his hands and knees on concrete floors, started feeling with his hands like this. I go, you're the guy. I said, come and do the job. <laughs> and he saved me a lot of time. He helped me out because there's no way I would have got this done in time and or I probably would have just wasted a lot more money in with mistakes and everything. So, you know what? I, I think it's just it's important to, to stick to your strengths and uh, and get and pay people to take care of stuff where you're not strong. Right. So I know where my strengths are and that wouldn't be it. So. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you, so did you start doing the flooring and then realize that you couldn't do it? Or what made you actually realize that you couldn't do the flooring yourself? Well, it started because I did it upstairs. Okay. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and they didn't do a great job. <laughs> so, so you did the flooring what? upstairs. Yes, I did the flooring upstairs. Yeah, in the, in the living room. It's the same, it's the exact same vinyl tile that we, we use down here. Um, so when I realized how long it took me and, and how time was ticking by and, um, and knowing that I was incurring, uh, expenses by losing time and by making mistakes, I said, you know what, I, I got to find somebody. And so it was just a realization when, when I realized when I got down here, you know, how much it's going to, what it's going to take. It's if you if you're not used to doing it on a regular basis, my quality would have been crap. Realistically, you know, I would have had tons of waste, and it would have been maybe three times as long to get it done, or even longer for that matter. I don't know, right? So <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think that I think I feel like this happens to a lot of people. You know, things look easy. And same thing, because we see it a lot in ours, because my husband owns a renovation business. So we see it a lot where, you know, we'll have customers come where they did the work and then they'll ask us to redo it again because they realize oh, it's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> no. Stick to your strength. <laughs> that's what I believe. Yeah. yeah, that's for sure. That's so yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So... so so with your okay, so with the floor, yeah. So you didn't do the flooring or the baseboards. Was there anything else that you wanted to try, or was it like after you did the flooring, you're like, I don't want to try doing anything else, and I just want to leave it to the experts? Good question. 
So what I did do with the help of um, my uh, my coach is my, I had my coach come down and he helped me install this kitchen. So I installed this with my coach here. So that was a great experience. It's just so I know what's happening. Would I do it again? Probably not. <laughs> but, you know, it's at least I know, right? I know what's going on and yeah. I understand so, how it works because I was going to say probably another thing of your learning experience from the plumbing was probably now you'll probably be able to notice next time if someone's putting the right plumbing in or not from this experience, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So everything, you know, there's there's a, a bright side to everything. It's it's a bit of a it's, – it's a blessing that it happened to me now because now my eyes are going to be more open. And one of the things, and, and, you know, somebody might ask, well, how do you prevent that maybe to begin with? Well, what I'm going to do from now on is I'm going to ask, if I'm going to go with a GC, I'm going to vet them a bit more. So I did do vetting on, on this GC, but what I didn't do, and I should have, and I will do moving forward, is how well do you know your subcontractors? How many subcontractors do you have? How many have you checked their insurance? Have you checked their license? What evidence do you have that they do good work? How much, you know, how much business did you do with them? So those are things that I want answers to before, you know, I decide I'm going to go with that person because I want to be satisfied that I know I'm going to get a good quality product. And, and that's the thing too is uh, I, I think I realized I'm maybe a little bit on the picky side when it comes to like quality. So uh and maybe that and maybe that's not a good thing. So I, I try to I'm trying to balance that out a little bit. But at the same time, you know, you have some expectations. Hundred percent. And, and yeah. you know the kind of tenants that you want in there, right? So so that may mean that you may want better finishings or, you know, better, you know, things to look nice and not just quickly done, let's say. Yeah. Yeah. And so like the other, so I had, um, what I did is um, I had my GC did the demo and um, and the drywall. And then I, I got him to to hang the doors, but I paid for the doors. And then I had to, I got my own electrician, master electrician, did a great job, arc electrical. And, and then I got my own flooring and gas guy. And also I got my own quartz person to bring the, uh, to do the, uh, the quartz top so tried to save a bit of money but again here in the kitchen we did spend a bit more went, went with the two-tone because again I'm, I'm looking for a higher quality tenant and i think we're getting it somebody who's willing to pay the money to move in here so at 1700 dollars a month i think we're doing good um what i did do in here with the help of uh, a couple of friends is all the painting so that that's something that that we did as well um what else did we do? Anything else here? I think that was, uh, I think that's it. The, you know, the, 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 the hardware and things like that, uh, I did as well. So, so that's it for, that's yeah. A good, a good learning experience, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, what, so what are your three tips that you would give to people that are going to start their first fur? What are your three tips? Prepare yourself, number one. How do you prepare yourself? Start learning. Start acquiring um, confidence. Start acquiring network. Acquire a peer network. Join real estate clubs. Hire a coach. Find mentors. People, you, it's relationships. It all comes out of relationships. You really have to be able, you have to be comfortable to pick up the phone or message or text or email somebody that two days ago you didn't know, but you know, over you, you established a relationship like and over over a period of time, or let's say you know a couple months ago you didn't know them, but now over over the last couple months you established established relationships. You you know who you could trust and have faith in. And so that's number one is like, you know, have the support network. Have you know a realtor that you can lean on. I've leaned on my realtor on this deal. So on this deal, I the way I worked it is um, I it was on MLS and I called the listing agent. So the realtor I used here in this case was actually the listing agent. It actually helped me pick the property up at a bit of a discount. 
compared to listing price. So that worked out well. And then since that point, I started leaning on him for other pieces of advice or referrals, mostly referrals, actually. So uh, he's been good that way. Uh, and he's also the man that's going to be coming in here on Friday to check it out and then give me and do uh, a market value appraisal for me. So I'm going to be preparing a package for the appraisers for, because it's going to be with one of the um, with one of the major banks. So I'm going to prepare a package which includes his assessment and includes all the pictures, including all the old pictures of things, all the things that we changed, and the new pictures. And um, just to you know, we want to just explain that everything's brand new in here. So um, it should it should bring us up to over 600. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a good idea. I never thought of that, you know, to give the appraiser a package so they can see it. I'm curious to see. Let me know once you get it, if uh, like how that works out, like if it, if you felt like it was worth it to do it or not, because that's something I've never thought of doing to give yeah. a package. Yeah. It's more important today, just FYI, because the appraisers aren't coming into the homes anymore. That's true, too. Yeah. yeah. So Although so, mine did actually, I just had appraisal last week and mine came in. But again, mine's like out in the middle of nowhere, so there's no COVID okay. closing of any kind. Maybe that's okay. why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like it's the major bank, like the appraisers that work for the bank, like the major banks. I think a lot of them they're not coming in. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So do you want to uh, tell the viewers what are your next steps? What are you planning to do now that this is basically coming to a close? Yeah, sure. Uh, so so I, uh, what I'm doing is um, there's a couple other projects I'm working on. So I, I, I work, I'm working with a partner on a, uh, on a property down in the U.S. that uh, it's, it's a flip in the U.S., so we're working on that. That's pretty exciting. <laughs> a little bit nerve-wracking, but exciting at the same time. So, it's scary, so, I think, for it to be so far away, right? Scary, yeah, absolutely. can be scary for sure, absolutely. So, it's, again, it's all about relationships and, and making sure you have you, the right people in, in your circles. And it takes time to get there because it, I remember the beginning where it's like I trusted no one. I was like, because I felt like everybody was out there to cheat me, right? It just, yeah. It's just a natural reaction. So I was going to say, time. everyone I think is like that. You know, you start off yeah. thinking that you have to do things on your own. And then I think that's what these communities do for you, right? It makes you yeah. realize that we are really all there to help each other grow and see each other, you know, be successful and that it's not like we need to, I'm going to have to push you down for me to go up. It doesn't work that way at all. Like, I feel like our communities are all about bringing all of us up together. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. So um, then I'm also working on, um, so one of the things I've been, I've been uh, learning and researching and now I'm acting on it is private lending. So I have some private lending deals that uh, I've, I've put in place. So I'm doing that. I've managed to, um, you know, after, even though the stock market's doing well, uh, after that last drop, I got fed up with the, with the markets and mutual funds and I took everything out of mutual funds, everything. Mm -hmm. and, and now I'm, I managed to, those are mostly RSPs I'm talking about. So now, of course, through, uh, through Olympia Trust, and I'm able to get my RSPs over there and then get my money out, making me pretty decent returns. So that's another thing I'm working on and looking to do more of. And also uh, actively searching small multi-unit uh, buildings as well. So because I'm looking for another deal. So if it's not going to maybe another duplex like this or... Or a small multi, like maybe three or four plex or five plex, six plex. I mean, I, I started looking all around the Golden Horseshoe. You know, I went out to Sarnia. I've been out to, to uh, St. Catharines, to Welland, to Niagara Falls. I'm looking at all these options, uh, locations, because I want to get a location that, that I figure is going to give me the best bang for my buck uh, and get me the best, uh, best income coming in. So I'm doing, doing that. Um, looking for partners all the time, of course. Uh, also, on um, one of them, I'm also looking for a partner on this house. 
So I'm looking for somebody who is looking for, we'll call it, I think the Epic Alliance team, I'll give them credit for this, they call it a hassle-free landlord. So somebody who doesn't want to be a landlord but wants the income and the growth in real estate and they can become a partner with me on this property, I will take care of it and they will reap the, uh, the benefits and the returns on this property moving forward because I, all the work is done. All they got to do is sit back and, and let and it happen, you. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so awesome. Those, those are the things, yeah. And what is the percentage that you're planning to do for your partner for this house? How are, you, how are you guys structuring it? It, it would be a 50-50. Oh, okay, that's good to know. Yeah. So that everyone yeah. knows. Marco's yeah. looking for a partner. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it, yeah it's, 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 it doesn't appeal necessarily to uh, most active type partners. It would, it would appeal to a passive type partner, right? Somebody who just 100%. doesn't want the headaches. They just put in the money and, just, yeah. and then just get their monthly amount yeah. every month which is yeah uh, plus the growth of people right because that percentage could be a lot more than they're making in mutual funds or stocks or anything yeah. so plus the growth i mean you know everybody when in their projections over the last year every time i went through a projection with anybody and in, in a, any kind of a deal analysis everybody used like a three four percent as a growth rate well i think all us investors now know that the growth rates in some of these smaller towns are way higher than that, like double, if not even more. We're looking at seven, eight, nine percent. Some of these, I, I never use those numbers to project, but reality is that's what's happening right now. You know, we always, I always use a smaller number to project. You know, like maybe four percent or five percent, but nothing more than that, right? Because obviously, yeah. like, once the true numbers come in, if it's more, you're like, yay, you know? Yeah. If it doesn't, then you're disappointed. So it's always better to be conservative with your numbers and just be excited when you get more. Yeah, And obviously, absolutely. your partners and investors will also be happy for that, right? Because if they're like, oh, I'm going to be making 4% on this, that's great. And then it comes out to 6 7 8%, they'll be even happier with you. That's right, yeah. So yeah, so, so that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. It was fun to hear about your project and see how how well it went. You know, even though you went through some problems, which we all do, but you're yeah. able to find solutions and successfully finish it. It was awesome to have you on. Thank you so much. And we've come a long way. It's been it's been fantastic like, our relationship. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Even with us, it's been a lot of fun getting to know you and it'll be for sure. We'll be having lots more yeah. things going on in the future. Just just uh, I'm going to leave you with uh, and, and I don't know who's on, but um, we used to do walk. I used to call them walk and talks. We used to do walk and talks, early morning walk and talks. And we would be six out like morning. at six in the morning or something, <laughs> walking, and people would be calling in. We'd merge all the calls, and we were walking, and we were all chatting about our, our visions, our goals, ideas, or whatever it was. That's how it started. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic. Thank you so much, Diana. Yeah, so much fun. Thanks for coming on. It was awesome to have you on. And we'll definitely hear about your next project. We'll do another one for your next project. we Will do. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Take everyone. Care. Thanks for watching. Ciao. It was nice you having too. everyone on. Bye. Bye.